Hello, it's uh, Parm King, the Dungeon Master of Legends of Barovia, and today is a Dungeon Master tip. It's more of a Dungeon Master philosophy. In fact, it's the uh, it's the mantra that I use when I'm playing. It's my method. I call it the rules fit the narrative. In fact, I'm working on my own uh, RPG now called Iberia RPG, and I'll put a link in the bottom if you're interested in looking at the draft rules, and it's kind of the method to my madness. Rules fit the narrative. What does that mean exactly? Well, in almost all kinds of games, whether you're playing war game, chess, backgammon, what, what have you, there's a very discrete set of rules, very structured, and the narrative fits within those rule sets. We can't break those rule sets. We've agreed that these are the rules that we're going to play by, and we play exactly by those rules. What I believe in my very humble opinion that differentiates role-playing game from all other games is that the rules fit within the narrative. The narrative itself is what propels the story. See, I believe as a game master and the dungeon master, my job is the director and the stage manager to set the scene and to play the ancillary characters. But the real narrative is driven by the stars of the show, the players. The player characters are the stars. They're the ones that are propelling and moving that story forward. It's their story. It's their narrative. And therefore, I need to incorporate the rules to fit the narrative. The narrative always takes precedent for me. Let me give you an example of this. I'm going to give you three examples. I'm going to set the scene here. I have a picture here that I took of uh, in Castillo Blanco. It's a castle. Um, and let's set the scene. It's, it's dark out. There's a castle. You're going to try to sneak into the castle. And there's a guard pacing back and forth in front of the castle. I'm going to do this three different ways to describe uh, this concept of rules fitting the narrative. The first example, the game master says it's a very dark night. Uh, it's cold out. You see a lone guard pacing slowly in front of the castle gates, rubbing his hands. You can actually see his breath on the air. What do you do? The player says, well, I, I press myself up against the castle wall in the shadows and I approach slowly, silently. My eyes are locked on the guard, monitoring his pace. When I get close enough, I take measure of his breath. And on his exhale, I pounce on him, cupping his mouth and slitting his throat, dragging his body back into the darkness. Let's do example two. Same scene, slightly different. It's late at night. It's dark out. You see a guard pacing in front of the main gate rather slowly. He doesn't seem to be paying too much attention. What do you do? PC says, I'm going to roll stealth. He rolls the dice. He ends up rolling an 11. The game master says, you've passed. You're now in stealth. Okay, now I'm going to sneak up and I'm going to cut the guard's throat and drag him into the darkness. The game master asks, well, what's your dexterity ability score? player says that's a 16. Game master looks at whether it's a DC or maybe it's the guard and says, okay, you're able to sneak up on the guard, cut his throat, and drag him back in the darkness. Let's do the same scenario, but just a little differently. It's dark out. You're out in front of the castle. Your guard stands out in front, pacing back and forth rather slowly. It's kind of cold out. What do you do? The player says, I want to sneak up on the guard and cut his throat. The game master says, well, you're going to have to do a roll, roll a stealth check. The player rolls his dice and rolls a 14. He goes, okay, you're in stealth now. The player says, I want to sneak up and I want to go and try to cut his throat. The game master says, okay, well, uh, roll a dexterity skill check and I'm going to roll one for the guard and it's going to be competition and whoever's higher is going to win. And, the player goes ahead and rolls and adds his dexterity modifier, gets a 16. I, as a GM, roll and only get a 12. And he goes, okay, you're successful. You approach the guard, cut his throat, and drag him into the darkness. These are all three of the same exact scenes, but played out just a little differently. And I would argue that in all three cases, the rules are fitting the narrative. In the first case, the PC explains in detail what he's doing, down to the timing, down to the exhaling and pouncing. The game master feels satisfied in his description and believes the character is capable of doing it. It fits within the realms of possibility. 
In this second example, the PC is instructing what he's attempting to do. In fact, the PC volunteers to roll stealth, says, I'm going to roll stealth. And the game master decides, hey, let me just check your ability score to see if it's high enough to, to overpower this guard. And in Greece, it does. And the scene plays out, continues, and he overpowers the guard. It's only one roll. In the third example, the PC is stating what he wants to do. He's actually asking, I want to do this. And the GM is now following a series of instructions. He's incorporating rules to fit within the narrative, asking him to roll stealth first, and then in a secondary action of rolling a competitive dexterity check. Each of these cases works perfectly well in my book, and in my opinion, all three of these would be totally fine at the table. And really, in each one of these things, the player character is driving the narrative. In the first one, he's telling him down to the detail what he's going to do to a satisfactory level of the game master. In the second one, he's telling him what he's attempting to do, and he believes that perhaps the player needs to roll some dice. So the player's volunteering to roll some dice. And the third one is the player is unsure if he's actually capable and wants to do it, and the game master is using rules to fit into the narrative to see if they're successful in doing it. In my book, all three of these are perfectly fine. I feel that the rules are there when the game master needs to pull on them to fit within the narrative. In fact, one of the basis where I always reach to the rules is when I believe a character is pushing the limits of the boundaries in which you're now getting into a realm of ambiguity or uncertainty in which I feel a role is necessary. There is a probability that they may fail at it. But in many instances, if the character player knows his character well enough and it fits within the realm of possibilities within the narrative, it happens, just like in the first example. My rule of thumb as a game master uh, or as a dungeon master that I will share with you is if a player asks, then you have them roll. If the player is instructing and telling you what they're doing, and it fits within the context of the scenario or the scene, and fits within the probabilities of outcome, then I just let the scene play out. I let the characters narrate what is happening in the scene. This is, for me, what makes role-playing games beautiful. It's a story-driven concept, and the rules there are fit within the narrative, help define the ambiguity, help resolve uncertainty. But I'll never, in a role-playing game, fit the narrative into the rule set, forcing the characters always to roll and, and adhering to a very strict box set of rules. When I start doing that, I feel I'm no longer playing a role-playing game, but I'm playing maybe a war game. There's nothing wrong with war games. I love war games. I've been playing those since the 80s. Avalon Hill, I don't know how many Avalon Hill games I've played. But role-playing is storytelling with a set of rules and instructions that fit within that narrative. I'm trying to build my own RPG system using this method uh, to my madness, and I'm slowly starting to get there. It's The player handbook is in its draft form, and I'm rather excited about it when I finish my Curse of Strahd campaign that I'm DMing and really shaking the rust off of my DM skills because it's been so long. I'm really excited about uh, DMing a game using my new rule sets, which really focuses on both rules fitting into the narrative and creating some simplicity, but with some elegant solutions. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe to this channel. Remember, every Thursday night, 6 p.m. GMT, we stream live our game, um, Curse of Strahd. It's called Legends of Barovia. It's very exciting. I have some great players. Please go ahead and watch that. In fact, we're going to be playing tonight. Tonight's Thursday. Yeah, tonight, 6 p.m. So anyway, uh, good luck in your game. Remember, the rules fit the narrative. And may all your roles be critical 20s. This is Parm King signing off. Until next time.